What are hypercube graphs, also sometimes just called n-cube graphs? That's what we'll be going over in today's Wrath of Math lesson. And this is a viewer-requested video. I always appreciate those requests, so be sure to leave yours down in the comments. I'm sure we are all familiar with squares, those beautiful 2D shapes, which of course we can generalize to three dimensions, and when we do that, we get a cube. So that's a poorly drawn cube, but you get the point. And we can generalize this to four dimensions as well, where we get what's called a hypercube. We use this same exact idea with hypercube graphs. Except, of course, in hypercube graphs, we take the vertices and edges of the cubes in different dimensions and represent them with the vertices and edges of a graph. Hypercube graphs are generally denoted Qn, where n is an element of the set containing non-negative integers. So what we'll do is go over how to construct these graphs and also mention a few of their interesting properties. For starters, the hypercube graph Qn has two to the power of n vertices. So if we want to go ahead and construct the first hypercube graph Q0, this just has a single vertex. That's two to the power of zero vertices. Of course, since it has only one vertex, it can't have any edges. The next hypercube graph is a little more interesting. This has two to the power of one vertices, which of course is two. So here are those two vertices. Now what about edges? Here is how you construct the edges of a hypercube graph. Again, the hypercube graph Qn has two to the power of n vertices. Then we will label these vertices from zero to two to the power of n minus one in binary. If you're not familiar with writing numbers in binary, it's not too difficult. I'd recommend brushing up on that and then coming back to this lesson. So we're going to label these vertices zero through one in binary, which is pretty easy. The first vertex is just zero, and then the next one is one. Then there are edges in a hypercube graph joining every pair of vertices that differ in exactly one binary digit. In this case, these two vertices differ in exactly one digit, so they are joined by an edge. A binary digit is also sometimes called a bit. So if the vertices differ in exactly one bit, they get joined by an edge. From here, we can actually make things a little bit easier on ourselves. Let's go ahead and draw Q2. And remember I said these graphs are sometimes called n-cube graphs, so you might call this graph the two-cube graph. So to make the next hypercube graph, what we can actually do is take the previous hypercube graph we had and then duplicate it. So now we've got our previous hypercube graph and another copy. Then add a leading zero to each of these binary numbers. That of course doesn't change the number. This is still zero and this is still one. And then in the copy, add a leading one to these binary numbers. Now, if you're familiar with binary, this is two in binary, and this is three. So our vertices are labeled zero, one, two, three. Now for the edges, we're doing that same crucial step. Edges join vertices that differ in exactly one bit. All right, we see that this vertex and this vertex both differ in the first bit. So we join them with an edge, and these vertices also differ in the first bit, so we join those with an edge. And you see, of course, we've got the graph of a square. These vertices aren't joined by an edge because they differ in two bits, and these vertices aren't joined by an edge for the same reason. All right, now how about the next graph, Q3, or the three cube graph? We just have to go through the same process again, and this will be the last one that I go over in detail. So first, we take our previous hypercube graph, Q2, and then make a copy of that graph. Now I've changed the color of these edges to hopefully make this graph easier to read, because I want to put this copy right over here, just so that our finished product is going to look like something we recognize. Totally unnecessary, just how I'm choosing to do it. Now remember, we want to add a leading zero to the vertices in our first copy. That was this blue one here, so we add leading zeros to these vertex labels. 
and then in our new copy, we will add leading ones. I'll just erase and rewrite that because I need a little bit more room. So that'll be 110. This becomes 100. This is 101. And this is 111. And again, if you're familiar with binary, you'll notice this is labeled 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Now for the new edges, we just join the vertices that differ in exactly one bit. These two vertices differ in just the first bit, so they are adjacent. These two vertices also differ in just the first bit, so they are adjacent. Same thing with these two vertices, so they get an edge. And same thing with those two vertices, so they get an edge. And you can see we've got a beautiful graph of a cube. That, of course, is where this hypercube graph name comes from. These are just graph theory versions of cubes in different dimensions. Something interesting you might notice is that the hypercube graph Qn is n regular. In Q3, for example, every vertex has degree 3. In Q2, every vertex has degree 2, and so on. So try to figure out why that is true if you're not already sure. Another very interesting fact is that all hypercube graphs are bipartite. For example, you can see that this graph is bipartite, where the red vertices are in one partite set and the green vertices are in the other. Again, I encourage you to figure out why that is true. The hint I'll give you is to look at how many ones a vertex has in its label compared to how many ones its adjacent vertices have in their labels. With that said, that should pretty much do it. That's just a little bit about hypercube graphs, how you can construct them, and some of their properties. But of course, before we go, I would like to offer you an exercise to try on your own. Grab a pencil and paper and try to do a sketch of the next hypercube graph, Q4. This graph, of course, will have 2 to the power of 4, which is 16, vertices. I like to leave the solutions in the description, but I can't really leave this solution in the description, so I'll just show you the graph on screen. So this is the last call. Try to make the 4-cube graph on your own. Alright, time for the big reveal. So there you go, that's the big 4-cube monster. I don't know how helpful it is because it is a, a bit of a mess. I've drawn the new edges in gray. I'm just going to shrink this a little bit so, so it fits a little better on the screen. So that is the hypercube graph Q4. And you certainly don't have to draw these graphs the way I have, putting a cube inside of a cube. I only drew it this way because for anyone who's seen a picture of a hypercube, this is how it's usually depicted, more or less. Anyways, that's all I have for you, so I hope this video helped you understand what hypercube or n-cube graphs are. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions, need anything clarified, or have any other video requests. Thank you very much for watching, I'll see you next time, and be sure to subscribe for the swankiest math lessons on the internet. And a big thanks to Valo, who, upon my request, kindly gave me permission to use his music in my math lessons. Link to his music in the description. Tintin.